hello everyone welcome to this video in this video let us prove the part b for this theorem right so here we wanted to prove that if we are given some kind of polynomial then uh, we can associate a polynomial operator to it and then we can define the spectral representation for this uh, polynomial operator right uh, which is given by equation 3 so we need to prove that this representation uh, is actually there for some polynomial operator and corresponding to it we can also define this equation 4 so this is what we wanted to prove here right so we will prove the theorem for polynomials where we will start by taking p lambda is equal to lambda to the power r once we made a result for this polynomial lambda raised to power r where r is some natural number so that means you have the result for all the polynomials lambda raised to power 0 lambda raised to power 1 not 0 because we are taking natural numbers so lambda raised to power 1 lambda raised to power 2 lambda raised to power 3 and so on and uh, if you have the results for this by taking the linear combinations you can have the result for any polynomials right so uh, we'll be uh, proving the result taking p lambda is equal to lambda to the power r right so let's suppose these four indexes first say kappa lambda mu and nu they are defined in this order right so we have taken this four indices such that they are related to each other in this way then we already know about a result that whenever we have lambda less than mu then e lambda is less than or related to e mu like this and moreover from this we also have e lambda e mu equal to e mu e lambda equal to e lambda so this is the result that we have already studied now we'll be making use of this result here so let's consider these two terms the composition of these two terms e lambda minus e kappa composed with e mu minus e mu right so you can multiply the terms together these are the projections which are defined for different indices so those different indices we have defined over here right so we can multiply all the terms e lambda with e mu the first term e lambda with e nu the second term then e kappa with e mu the third term e kappa with e nu the fourth term so we have this now we can make use of these uh, over here so you see e lambda e nu that is equal to e lambda only so here also e lambda e mu is equal to e lambda similarly e lambda e nu would be equal to e lambda the first indice index over here the next term e kappa e mu would be equal to e kappa only and e kappa e nu would be equal to e kappa only so you see this and this cancels with each other this and this cancels with each other so finally we have a zero operator so this shows that if we take the composition of these two operators that will give you a zero operator in other words what is this thing this is the subtraction of two projection operators so that means you could write it as uh, the uh, this delta uh, write this thing in this delta notation so you could write this as e delta n j where j is some other index right representing this difference and you can also write e mu minus e nu now this thing is not equal to delta n j why because uh, here we have mu and nu as two uh, different indices so for this we'll be writing e delta n k where this k and j they are different from each other right so we can take any uh, nomenclature here we have taken this to be n j and n k here so their composition is equal to zero so we have this result and moreover because we know this e delta n j that is the subtraction of two projections so this is also a projection because difference of projections is also a projection so being a projection it is idempotent if it is idempotent so you could write any power of it and you would get back the same projection so you we have this result when we have s is equal to 1 2 and so on so uh, using this result over here we obtain the equation number uh, 5 here not 5 uh, it is 9 so we obtain equation 9 here according to the numbering that was given in part a this is equation 9 so here uh, we obtain if we take this term summation lambda cap nj e delta 
n j whole raised to power r so this r would be uh, there would would come up on this term and this term now for this term it is simply this term why because it is uh, idempotent being a projection so no power would be there here uh, would be on this term so we would have power on this term only right so we have this as equation number 9 and so here before moving further on to the proof let's first understand that what we are trying to do here we wanted to prove this thing p of t is equal to integration m minus 0 to capital m p lambda d e lambda where this e lambda is the spectral family and indeed the uh, calculation of spectral family in reality is very difficult for various operators so uh, that is one fact let's uh, get back to our proof we wanted to prove that this is the spectral representation of the pro uh, polynomial operator so in our case we have considered the polynomial p lambda to be lambda raised to power r so in that case the polynomial operator p of t would become t to the power r so what do we require to prove here we are required to prove that t to the power r is nothing but integration from m minus 0 to capital m lambda raised to power r d e lambda so this is what we uh, is required for the proof uh, so in order to prove this thing this equation here what we will do we will again construct sequence of partitions as we have done in part a uh, so we are taking the same partitions in this part also and we will now prove that the sum of sequence converges to t to the power r right so uh, so that for a given epsilon greater than 0 we would have this norm less than epsilon now what is this norm the norm of t to the power r in this case and summation lambda nj raised to power r e delta nj right so this is what we wanted to prove here in this part so uh, once we have this result with us we are almost there we uh, let's see how how do we re reach to a uh, convergence to t to the power r now we wanted to prove that the difference between t to the power r and this thing Uh, that is very small and then uh, the, the the norm of difference that is smaller than epsilon so let's see how so here uh, because you already know in part a we have proved this convergence the convergence of the sequence to this operator t so therefore we obtain the uh, integral uh, spectral representation in that way so uh, previously we have uh, observe that the sum in this equation was close to the operator t so therefore in the expression 9 on the left hand side so that means we are talking about this term right this term would now be so what we are saying we are saying the expression in equation 9 on the left hand side will be close to t to the power r why because composition of bounded linear operators that is continuous so therefore by the above equation 9 we for a given epsilon greater than 0 we have certain capital n such that whenever we take some number which is greater than this capital n this norm is less than epsilon what is this norm t to the power r minus summation lambda nj is to power r e delta nj so this proof Uh, our equation three and four. Whenever we take lam p lambda to be lambda to the power r, and similarly, uh, the result would also hold for every polynomial, uh, any arbitrary polynomial which would have real coefficients. Why? Because that is just a linear combination of other polynomials. So I hope you understood uh, this theorem and its proof well. Well, that is it for this video. Thank you for watching.